first of all, what I would like to point out is that um, it's not only a matter of uh, um, personal data or privacy. It's about all sensitive data. Um, when we talk about transparency and uh, accountability and trust, it depends. In fact, it's a, a matter of reducing the asymmetry. Of course, you know about that. Uh, reducing the asymmetry between um, um, digital service provider and digital service consumer, whatever the consumer is. When the consumer is citizen, then we are talking about civil rights, freedom, etc., etc. But when the consumer is a professional, we are talking about competition. Is it fair competition or unfair competition? So it's not only about uh, private data, I mean personal data. And when client and, and consumer is the government, then we can talk about sovereignty. So it's wider perspective from my uh, point of view. OK, so this is the first point. Uh, the second one, in fact, I would like, I will not go through all the details because all over the day you have some insights, in fact, from each of these um, uh, ideas. But at least uh, I would like to give you an example coming from a study that have been conducted between um, a research um, ENRIA group with a regulation authority, which is CNIL, maybe you know about CNIL yeah, in France. And uh, in fact, through information monitoring methods, that means uh, monitoring data in, data out, and system calls, uh, they have measured and make objective um, for a given application that we have on our uh, mobile phones, for instance, when the application is asking you whether you would like to share your GPS position uh, and you have um, cases to say yes or no, and I mean, it has measured that whatever you answer, your GPS position is taken into account. Okay. So, in fact, this is my point. I mean, the law say, okay, the consent is very important, it's, it's a right. But once we say that, how the lawyer could check if really law is applied and if consent is really effective? So in fact, my talk is all about, I mean, such situations that means it's very important to provide algorithmic tools and um, also uh, uh, for this example is also very interesting, credit scoring. Uh, th there was some studies that have been conducted, not in France, but in the US, with regards to FICU score. And um, it turns out that there are some people who know how this credit scoring FICO is, I mean, how the algorithm is, is um, uh, um, computing the information and the score. And those who know how it works, in fact, behave exactly how we should behave with regards to the amount that they spend per month, maybe number of uh, um, credit cards, a number of, I mean, everything. So they arrange to keep traces such that they have the highest score. But people who don't know how the algorithm is computed, then, okay, they came, I mean, <laughs> they have no idea how it is done. So that's why there are new kinds of discrimination, in fact, between those who know how algorithm uh, works and those who do not. So this is an issue. Okay. Very few examples, of course, you know about bias, not only from the data point of view, but also from algorithmic point of view. That's why I talk about algorithmic systems, meaning data and algorithm. Because, of course, we can have different sources. OK. It, it doesn't work on the screen, of course, yeah. Um, bias related to data and bias related to algorithm. OK, you know about these um, bias sources. Um, I mean, the lack of uh, uh, representation of the situation is, is an issue, but also the predictive algorithm could, I mean, can project in the future bias of the past. Okay. 
So, there are in fact plenty of challenges here. Um, first of all, um, algorithms are encapsulated opinions through decision parameters and learning data. This is really important to catch as uh, it's not, I mean, using algorithm, of course, it makes things easier for the human, that's for sure. There are plenty of benefits. I mean, this is not the question, but we need to be careful with regards to this kind of, in fact, all, I mean, the, the problem is not the algorithm, is the human who is using the algorithm. So um, it is very important that we spend a lot of uh, effort with regards to accuracy, robustness, because uh, robustness and uh, um, the lack of robustness can produce unintentional discrimination also. So um, one of, uh, yeah, interdisciplinary co-conception of solution is one of the key uh, from our opinion, and that's why we are fostering interdisciplinary research between computer scientists, uh, lawyer, sociologists, and economists. Uh, but also we need to uh, develop a new generation of algorithms which are transparent by design, uh, including, I mean, ethical principle by design, equity by design, etc. I mean, really we need this new generation of algorithm, including these principles. This is very important. And my point, this is, in fact, my point is that AI and algorithm, because humans cannot by themselves monitor the behavior of algorithm. We need other kind of algorithm, which of course, um, transparent, could be open source, I mean, uh, available for everyone to be checked and, and uh, tested. But at the same time, it's very important to have this kind of thing. In fact, to come back to the previous examples with regards to consent, the problem there, when CNIL comes back to the enterprise saying, okay, what's happening there? So the it comes out that the issue is that um, the um, software developers who develop this component, this software component, have uh, make software reuse from uh, different uh, machine learning, algorithm, etc., which are open source today. Most of the time, machine learning are open source today. And they, they haven't been sufficiently careful about information leaks uh, with this component. So this have impact on, we need to adapt the training of data scientists to this kind of thing. These are very new, in fact, today the, um, uh, machine learning algorithm, are not, it's not the issue because, uh, and I, I could not imagine that enterprise recruit data scientists to uh, uh, program regression algorithm. It has no sense. Plenty of algorithms of such kind are available. So we need different training uh, way for that new generation of data scientists. So that's why GDPR is okay but we need to support the GDPR with algorithmic tools to be sure that it's effective. We have no guarantee that it could be effective, in fact. So, um, yeah, international collaboration is key since we are facing concepts such um, loyalty, fairness, equity, which are somehow subjective, dependent from cultural uh, context, from policy context, so that's why it is not very efficient to develop each, I mean, community on her own, their uh, uh, f uh, fair algorithm, their loyal algorithm, etc. But we need um, a minimum f international effort in this regard. In fact, this is <laughs> slide was uh, not, in fact, it was independent from. Uh, the uh, news nowadays, it was about, in fact, Cambridge Analytica, uh, but it's, yeah, it's actuality now, <laughs> because it's the really uh, one of the typical example that shows that 
ethical does not mean responsible and vice versa. Uh, Cambridge Analytica um, are not violating no law. I mean, they, are, they exist and it, it's not illegal. It's not illegal, but uh, it's not so ethical. It may be illegal too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, having impact on opinions which impact democracy. They're repurposing and they don't have any legal ground for that. So this is unlawful. There's no doubt for that. Uh, they, they, they still exist. So. so I know many people who are doing <laughs> unlawful things that exist, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, we have plenty of examples where responsible does not mean ethical because most of the time we use both vocabulary together, but they are really different. So, so there are two uh, ways to, in fact, to face this situation. One of them is the auditability of algorithm, and the other way is to develop new generation of algorithm which are transparent than design. And that's what I was saying a few uh, minutes ago. The real asset are the data um, and not the algorithm because algorithms today are available but not data. I mean, no, I, I didn't see people who would like to share data very generously, okay? So in this regard, we, uh, it's very um, new, very recent. The kickoff was mid-February. Uh, we launched in France this initiative, which is uh, the Taya Institute, um, which is very important, is that uh, we build up a um, very interdisciplinary community from uh, mathematic uh, mathematicians, computer scientists, management and economy, social science, and legal science. And um, we have these four um, I mean, uh, priorities and challenges from data to knowledge, from data to decision, of course, um, fundamental research and deep learning uh, to artificial intelligence, but the two others, transparency, responsible AI, and ethics are fully interdisciplinary uh, since computer science scientists do not, uh, cannot define what is responsible algorithm. It's responsible with regards to policy uh, consideration. So they, I mean, they need to work together and they start to work together in this regard, in fact. Uh, the fourth um, direction is about data protection, regulation, and economy. So people working on different models about um, uh, protecting data in a central model or distributed model, um, but in the same time looking to the um, business model, which because the business model could have impact on the technological choices. And at the same time, um, the policy context can also, um, uh, I mean, help uh, in choosing the technical solutions. So that's why it's very important from the beginning, uh, yes, uh, to uh, make the co-conception from the very beginning and not making things in a sequential way because it's lost a loss of time and energy. Of course, uh, money. So, um, in addition uh, to um, to this, um, in fact, research project, the TAIA, Transalgo, which is a national scientific platform for transparency and accountability, to develop tools and methods for data and algorithm. Uh, in fact, uh, it was, I mean, uh, uh, it was following the very recent law in France. Uh, with regards to law for digital republic uh, that uh, states the right to the citizens uh, for the explainability of algorithmic decision for public services. And once the uh, law said, I mean, to, to uh, citizens that you have this right, in fact, how to apply it, how to apply the law. So that, that's why the um, uh, French government decided to, uh, in fact, to build this platform from the um, interdisciplinary, again, point of view, but to provide algorithmic tools to help uh, the applicability of the law. So, um, so we have uh, multiple um, contribution. I mean, 
uh, not from the academia only, but uh, a lot of um, regu uh, regulatory bodies. Uh, because, you, as you know, recommendation of content, uh, from cultural content, uh, now it's um, unfair competition for some cultural content production. I mean, as I said, there are a lot of economic um, uh, issues there. So uh, the objective of this uh, platform is not only science. Uh, there is, a, I mean, a big um, objective about awareness rising for large public. When I say large public, that means including also scientists, because some of this time, scientists, okay, oh, uh, transparency, certification, okay, certification, we do that since a long time, but it's different. We need also to explain these problems even to scientists and not, I mean, that's why it's, uh, we need to have this uh, awareness rising effort um, and resource center, uh, sharing best practice, and um, in fact, within this uh, initiative, we build up uh, some working groups, which are more s um, scientific community oriented, though, uh, about auditability of recommendation and ranking systems, explainability, reproducibility, and uh, bias of machine learning. Uh, the third uh, working group is about privacy data usage control and information monitoring. The fourth one is about influence nudging and fact-checking. So this is ongoing, and we believe that um, it's very important to, to really enlarge these concept and, and effort to, I mean, beyond the uh, scientific community. This is very important. Thank you. Okay.